podcast. I am your host, Kristen, and I am here to talk to you about what else? Knitting. Uh, I will also be talking about knitting pattern design, other goings on in the fiber arts community. And as usual, there is a pretty good chance that I will mention Diego Luna for no good reason at some point during the podcast. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep the podcast up and running. Uh, and a welcome to anyone who is checking out the podcast for the very first time. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I am a knitting pattern designer and instructor. Uh, I live in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. with my husband and two little boys and one grumpy cat and two carnival fish that won't die. <laughs> um, and I also enjoy baseball, yoga, gardening, and drinking wine, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin today, honestly. Uh, we just finished our third week at home during the um, lockdown or stay at home or quarantine, whatever you want to call it for coronavirus. Um, so the kids have been at home for three weeks. I've been homeschooling for three weeks. Um, New York City and Pennsylvania and Virginia have all announced that they are going to keep their schools closed through the end of the school year. I, uh, I suspect Maryland is not going to be far behind. I am... Ugh. Homeschooling was not uh, in my plans, to tell you the truth. Um, and the schools are doing, I guess, distance learning. So they're trying to do these uh, Zoom classes with the kids and they're sending work. Um, but it is still a lot for me to do on my end to coordinate because my kids aren't really old enough to be self-directed. Um, I still got to get them set up and uh, <laughs> encourage them to pay attention, especially the little one. Uh, if there is anything more pointless than a Zoom class for pre-kindergarten, I don't know what it is. It's a little bit ridiculous. Um, the little one though is the one I'm most worried about um, because we don't have his placement for kindergarten yet. He's supposed to start kindergarten in the fall. He has some um, developmental delays and behavioral issues. So they were still kind of evaluating him to see where he would um, fit best for kindergarten. And that's kind of up in the air now. He had been doing much better uh, in pre-K um, with his behavior, but you know, that's, that's the thing I can't really do at home. I can keep up with the academic work at home. I can't create, recreate a classroom environment in which he has to interact with his classmates and listen to his teachers and transition between activities and, and all of that stuff. So that is something I am very worried about, um, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, so we are homeschooling uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, we also have guests. Uh, my brother-in-law is a graduate student at MIT. Um, so the campus closed uh, and he had to leave and um, Peru closed its borders so he can't get back to Peru. Uh, so he and his fiance have been here for two weeks. I <laughs> don't know how much longer they will be here. Um, he also has a sister uh, living in Utah that he could stay with. Um, my understanding is she actually has a bit more space um, Where she is she has they have um, some kind of Structure or apartment on their property. I don't know if it's part of their house or separate that they usually rent out um, through Airbnb. She lives in um, Salt Lake City, I guess or you know what? I'm not really sure. Where the, wherever they have Sundance, <laughs> that's where she lives. Um, so I guess during that season, it's a good time to 
uh, to rent that out. Speaking of Sundance, this year she met Diego Luna. See, I, I knew I'd work it in there. Yeah, she got to meet Diego Luna this year and I'm so jealous. Um, anyway, so he could also stay with her uh, and her husband and their kids. Um, but because it's in Utah, I'm sorry if you hear background noise, my kids are playing outside. Um, it's gonna be a lot more complicated for him to get there and then get back home when Peru eventually does open its borders, hopefully. Um, so for now they're staying here. They've been here for two weeks. Um, Peru's state of emergency has been declared through April 26th, I believe. So certainly their borders will not open any earlier than that. Um, and even if he wanted to, to go to Utah, I'm not sure what kind of flights or anything are available. So, um, but obviously I want to be accommodating. <laughs> I don't want him to be homeless, but I said, you know, they're going to come and stay here. That's absolutely fine, but they're not going to go back and forth. So if he's here and then he decides to go to Utah, I don't want them coming back and bringing all kinds of airplane germs and things around my kids. <laughs> so hopefully that's not too mean. Um, and we are just trying to make it through. Um, you know, my days are already kind of groundhog day-ish with the kids. But usually, at least on the weekends, things change up a little bit. Um, occasionally I can get out or I can go visit my sister and, um, you know, I, I do my work. And so it's, um, it's perhaps not a huge change for me. There's my child yelling about a bee. Um, but having so many people in the house, I am, uh, I'm definitely an introvert in that I need, I think I need more time alone than most people to kind of recharge. Um, and there's just, there's really no alone time <laughs> anymore. You know, sometimes like right now I'm in my studio by myself recording, but I can still hear everybody running around and hear the kids screaming and it's, it's not the same. There's really just no... <laughs> There's no peace and quiet anymore, uh, unless I am actively sleeping. And even then, Ollie has been getting up at night and waking us up. And it's like he wakes up and he he's not like crying or anything, but he doesn't want to go back to sleep. He wants to be entertained. So <sighs> it's certainly a struggle. I imagine we're all struggling now though. Um, but we are so far very um, healthy and we have um, just, they're just yelling about bees. I don't, anyway, <laughs> we have uh, enough food and so far, we haven't run out of toilet paper. Um, so, you know, certainly things uh, could be worse, but it is definitely getting challenging. Um, so wherever you guys are, I hope you are all healthy and safe and staying home. Um, and hopefully we will start um, seeing some more progress. I know... Um, you know, the stay-at-home orders appear to be doing what they're intended to do. Um, keeping the virus from spreading uh, quickly and overwhelming the healthcare system. But um, that said, we don't want to stop this sort of social distancing too early. We don't want to get too cocky. We need to keep doing what we can to make sure that um, things don't get out of hand. So... As I said, I hope you are all safe and healthy and not going stu too stir crazy uh, and maybe even able to get uh, a little bit of quiet time occasionally. Um, but let's start talking about something uh, a little more fun, some knitting. 
So I am excited to share that I have a pattern drop in this episode, uh, and that is the Hairspray and Radio Shawl slash Schlank. <laughs> I did that last episode too. Slash Schlank it, uh, which is a great big cozy worsted weight shawl. So I'm going to pop a few nice photos in here. <laughs> shawl so you can check it out uh, up close. All right, so here we have it, the Hairspray and Radio Shawl. Uh, as I perhaps had mentioned previously, all of my indie pattern designs this year are going to be a word or a turn of phrase from a song. And so this pattern, Hairspray and Radio, is from the song Good Morning Baltimore from Hairspray. Uh, and I chose this because this yarn is also from Baltimore, as am I. Uh, and this is from Neighborhood Fiber Company, which is based in Baltimore City. All right, so Hairspray and Radio starts with this big, big cable column. And this is done in just a worsted weight yarn. This is Studio Worsted from Neighborhood Fiber Company, and the colorway is Shadow. So you knit that down to a point. Uh, and then you pick up along the sides for these wings. So first part is in this uh, garter slip stitch pattern. And here I add in the lace weight mohair. This is their um, loft yarn, which is uh, mohair silk. They also now have uh, an alpaca silk lace weight. I don't remember what it's called. I will try to remember to include the link in the show notes. And this color, um, I keep losing the light, is called Broadway Market. It's just sort of a, uh, a dark blue. And you can see sort of the contrast, but here it looks a little bit hazier because I'm using the, the, the blue, it's picking up on the blue in the main yarn, and you also have the fluff from the mohair. So you can see it just looks a little bit hazier while this looks very clear. Uh, then we transition into this beautiful Fisherman's Rib, which is one of my favorite stitches. Uh, it's extra, extra squishy. If you're not familiar with it, it is very easy to do. You're just knitting into the row below. You can really see that halo. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is so soft and fluffy and cozy. It's kind of like a, a security blanket, but it's a shawl. <laughs> uh, and then you work that, you know, you're just shaping up the side here, doing the decreases up the side. And then we finish up with just some twisted rib to a point. And for the twisted rib, I dropped the lace weight yarn so you can again see sort of what contrast between not only the stitch patterns but the clarity of the color all right Let's see if i can get a, a little bit of a wider shot of the shawl without knocking it off so this is absolutely enormous <laughs> um it is about 80 inches across the top so this is nice and big and you can see this goes all the way from you know the base of the neck down to what would be below your butt. So this is a nice, big, cozy project that I love. We're getting a little afternoon light. It's making the that halo. That's so pretty. So hairspray and radio in Neighborhood Fiber Company's beautiful yarn. So that is the hairspray and radio shawl slash schlankets. Wow. Um, you can find the pattern in my Ravelry shop, which is linked down below and all of that information there. And you'll also find it in the show notes. Um, and through the end of April, podcast watchers only uh, can save a dollar on the pattern with code ELO and STITCH1. So that'll save you uh, $1 on the regular pattern price. Uh, I hope you will check it out. Um, it is... A good project I think for this time where we're all at home um, it's got enough going on to hold your interest but it's not overly complicated um, you can sort of memorize the stitch patterns uh, you don't need to sit there with the pattern or chart or anything 
Um, so I think it'll make a good project for these ties where we want something to focus on, but we maybe don't have <laughs> the uh, usual brain space to handle something more complicated. So again, that's Hairspray and Radio Show. You can save uh, $1 on the pattern price through the end of the month with code ELO and Stitch one and you will find a link to my Ravelry pattern shop down below and all that information and in the show notes. Okay, in this episode for news and notes, we obviously have to announce the winner of the 500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, so thank you to everyone who watched episode 17 of the Learn Stitch podcast. I mentioned that we had recently passed 500 subscribers uh, and I was going to do a little bit of a giveaway in that honor. So um, I am giving away a you don't, I don't have it here. <laughs> it's fine, me somewhere. Um, a skein of wool and a notions pouch uh, to one person who left a comment on episode 17. And that person is Veronica. So thank you so much for checking out the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel and helped us get up to 500 subscribers. Um, I hope you will keep watching. I hope you will maybe share with some friends so we can start working toward 1000 subscribers. Uh, and Veronica, if you can leave a comment below this episode and let me know, you know, your Ravelry ID or your Instagram ID or wherever you prefer to receive messages, and then I will get in touch that way. Since as far as I know, there is no messaging function on YouTube. <laughs> um, so again, thank you all so much. And I hope very soon we will be having that 1000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, and then one more little bit of news and notes. It's just a reminder um, that I recently published a five video series called Knitting 101 to teach you how to knit. Uh, I'm sure we all have friends and family that are stuck at home right now looking for something to keep them busy. Um, so if you know of anybody who is looking to learn to knit, please send them my way. All right, of course, we're not allowed to leave the house, but yarn keeps making its way into my home. I, I don't know why. It's just it, the yarn finds me. Uh, so I have a couple of stash flashes for you. So every year here in Maryland, we have the homespun yarn party at the end of March. Uh, actually, every year I miss it because it is um, the weekend right around uh, what was my grandfather's birthday. Um, and we always have a big family lunch. Uh, he had six kids. So my dad's side of the family is pretty big. We always have a big family lunch at his favorite restaurant to sort of remember him. He passed um, in 2016. So I always miss the homespun yarn, homespun yarn party. Uh, and of course this year everybody missed it because it was canceled because you all have to stay at home. But they had a nice virtual homespun yarn party um, with most if not all of their vendors um, selling online uh, and offering special discounts and things, uh, which is kind of nice in a way because people who are not from Maryland were able to participate. Uh, so I wanted to support that event um, of course, with, you know, everything that's going on, um, I don't have a whole lot of money right now to be spending on yarn. So, uh, I just picked up one skein and I am so happy with it. This is from 29 Bridges Studio and this colorway is called Patina and I love it. It's sort of rusty pale blue with these golds and browns. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I am really happy with this purchase. Of course, as usual, I have no idea what it's going to be. It is a sock yarn, um, 436 yards. So that's a nice size for a shawlette or combine uh, with something else for a larger shawl or, you know, maybe actually make socks out of it. Who knows? Um, so I have no immediate plans, but very happy with my purchase. It is absolutely beautiful. So thank you to 29 Bridges Studio for this gorgeous yarn. I'll show you their cute label. Um, and uh, all of the vendors for Homespun Yarn Party, so sorry you missed out on your event, but it was really nice of all of you to sort of do the virtual event. And I hope uh, as this uh, stay-at-home order continues, um, all of the dyers are able to continue to participate in these kind of online events so that uh, they don't lose business. I know this is such a tricky time for everybody. Um, but I thought that was a really cute idea. And so I hope we'll, we'll keep seeing stuff like that. Uh, and then I got some yarn for an upcoming design. So this design uh, actually is not gonna be published until February, 2021. 
So way, way ahead. I, I like, in some ways I like um, when publishers are, are so far ahead because it usually gives you more time to do uh, samples and things. Um, on the other hand, sometimes, you know, it's really hard to be thinking about February 2021 when it's springtime here and, and the weather's getting nicer. Um, but I do have yarn for an upcoming project for February 2021. So this is from Yarn Love, which I believe is a company that's been around for a while, but I don't think I've ever had a chance to use their yarn before. I'm not sure. Um, and these... <laughs> Um, both of these colors are called Shiny Penny, but because the bases are different, you can see how different they look. So this one is, let's see, um, Merino Yak and Silk, and this is like a fingering weight yarn. Uh, yeah, 100 grams, 420 yards, so that's a fingering weight. And this one, as you can probably see, is uh, one of these floofy lace weight yarns that are so popular now. This one is Cereal Alpaca and Silk. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, I've been knitting with both recently for different projects, and I think I kind of like the alpaca, the Surrey alpaca, better than the mohair. Um, it's a little bit softer, uh, which makes it a little bit less sticky. Uh, and they're both wonderful. And and you know, some of the the pros and cons for both of them kind of match. You know, it's they shed a lot. <laughs> that that's the same. Um, you know, they're really soft. That's the same. Um, but uh, the mohair just seems a little bit stickier. So if you have to rip back, and we'll get to that, um, it's a little bit harder. I found it a little bit easier with the alpaca, and the alpaca is just a little bit, a little bit softer. So, so this is an alpaca silk lace weight, and these are going to be combined together um, in a design that is going to be in a relatively new. Um, I think they've been around for maybe a year or two. Um, magazine collection daily <laughs> in February 2021. Um, I won't tell you the name, but I will tell you that they uh, do their issues by uh, geographical focus. Um, to be honest, I don't remember what the geographical focus is for the issue that's going to be published in. I want to say it's something like Iowa or Idaho or <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this project and to working with a new publisher um, I, I love some of the stuff that they've been doing so far they have already had an issue that was focused on uh, Maryland sort of Maryland DC and Virginia area and I just ran out of time to submit for it which really bums me out that they actually did my area and I didn't uh, I just ran out of time I think the deadline had been, you know, so I was really busy with something with the kids or so I just I ran out of time. I'm really bummed that I didn't get anything published in that, but I am looking forward to a new project with them and to this beautiful yarn that I'll be working with. So that is my stash flash for this episode. All right, for on and off the needles. In this episode, I don't have too much to tell you. I, as usual, haven't finished anything, but I also haven't started anything that is not a um, design. I usually try to keep the design stuff in in the Adelante segment, so <laughs> I don't have too much to show you, but I have managed to make it up to the armholes on my Breeze racer back. Um, I know that looks a lot messier than it is because I am... Uh, double stranding this project. So uh, this is the Breeze Racerback by Jessie Mae Martinson of Jessie Mae Designs and I have completed the whole body. So I just bound off for the armholes on this side and over here. So uh, now I'm going to be doing I guess what will be considered the yoke and this should actually be finished up really quickly because it's just a racer back tank top so you've got you know two sort of triangle shapes up the front and then the in the back uh, in case you missed it that was shoop. obviously that's the sound that your racer back makes um so this should be done really soon uh i am kind of thinking i might finish it this weekend um Let's see, I'd really love to just 
put something off the needles. I don't know about you, but I have been feeling <sighs> kind of eh about pretty much everything, but even knitting. Um, I The one project, the design project that I've been working on that I've been really excited about, um, I screwed up and <laughs> I had to rip it out and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Um, so that kind of bummed me out. And then the other design project that I'm working on, I'm just really not that excited about anymore. Um, but I, I need to focus on those to get them published. So I really can't start any new personal projects. So I feel like if I could, you know, get this finished up and maybe start wearing it, that would help. Um, so I am, as I said, double stranding this. It calls for just a fingering weight. But I am using a fingering weight with a, a silk metal hair lace weight. And these are my two colors. So this is Blue Raspberry Slurpee. This is a single ply merino from Skinny Dipping. And this is um, the lace weight mohair silk from Little Fox Yarn Company. And it's either called Boy Blue or Blue Boy. <laughs> One of the two. Um, so they are just looking lovely together. This kind of blends right in, so it's just giving it some extra fuzz. Um, I'm hoping this will really be like a nice, comfortable sort of lounge piece. Um, our weather is getting warmer, but it is still plenty cool enough um, that I should be able to get some wear in, from this. You know, even in the summertime in the air conditioning, I think even though it's a, it's a racer bag tank top, I probably still wear that some. Um, so that is pretty much the only thing I have been working on by the next episode. Uh, if it is not done and off my needles, you have permission to yell at me. Um, and that is part of my Make 9 for 2020. It is the only project that I have started. <laughs> uh, where does the time go? Like, I know a lot of people are bored being at home. Since I have two kids, I'm not bored. Like there's always something to do. It's just not <laughs> always something that I want to be doing. Um, so, you know, I kind of wish I was bored so I had more time for knitting and personal projects. But alas, that has not been the case so far. So that's all I have in this episode for On the Needles, Off the Needles. All right, so Adelante, this is usually upcoming designs that I'm gonna show you sneak peeks of. Um, so I have something that is really just getting started. Um, last fall, I published the Witchcraft Hat, and I will pop a little photo in here. And that is with yarn from the Fiber Seed. That was part of her Fiber Seed Swifties program. And she recently dyed up a new color that I thought was just gorgeous. It is called Andromeda. And let's look at this. It has everything, blues, purples, silvers, dark grays. It's just such a gorgeous color. Lighting in here is not great today. Maybe I should have started recording earlier. Live and learn. Um, so this is just such a beautiful color and I saw it and I was like, I would love to maybe make a kind of follow-up pattern using this color. Um, so I talked to her and she picked out a complimentary color. I can't remember off the top of my head what this is called, but I will put it in the show notes. Um, obviously they go together very well and like the colors that I used for the witchcraft hat, um, they kind of will fade in and out because this matches one of the colors in here. So it's not a super stark contrast. You kind of get like a blurring that it, it kind of looks like it's coming in and out. So um, having done the hat, I thought socks, we need socks. That'll be perfect. So I have started working on them. It's gonna be hard to see. The pattern is, I think, gonna stand out much more um, once it gets going. I've only done one repeat and it definitely needs blocking because the pattern uses slip stitches. Um, so those really need blocking to sort of even them out. 
but you can see sort of the crisscross lines are developing and I love it. I love using the variegated in the background. I mean, you could do it either way, but I personally prefer to use it in the background. Um, sock patterns are um, relatively easy. I've already done sort of the hard part, which was working out charts for each size. Um, this is a, the original was a 10 stitch repeat, but obviously uh, sock patterns usually have about a half inch between sizes, which is um, maybe four or five stitches. So you can't just use the same chart. Uh, otherwise it, you would only have sizes that were 10 stitches different. So, and, and that would not, uh, you know, you'd have like a seven, an eight and a quarter, you know, nine and a half, things like that. Um, and, and most sock patterns, uh, they're usually gonna give you sizes that are about a half inch apart. So I did the, the, the biggest bit of work, which was creating the charts for the different sizes. Um, and the pattern is uh, pretty much ready to go. So I am going to be um, putting it. That's my son. He thinks he's singing. Um, no matter what I say, I'm like, could you please sing a song with actual words and not just da 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 da? But no. Um, so apologies. The pattern is pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to be putting out a call for testing. Um, so you will be able to find that uh, on my Instagram. If you are looking for it, you can also sign up for my test knitting newsletter at um, mediapetterwana.com slash test knitting. Um, and I will obviously include a link to that in the show notes as well. If you are interested in testing um, this or, you know, any other upcoming pattern, um, this one is going to take to coordinating somewhat contrasting skeins of sock yarn. So hoping to get that out. As I said, it is, the pattern itself is uh, pretty much done because I can use previous sock patterns that I've done um, and, you know, tweak the numbers a little bit for slight differences in gauge and things like that. But for the most part, um, I can reuse uh, a previous pattern and, and start with that as my base. So it takes uh, a little bit less work. Um, and that is going to be, hopefully the pattern will be coming out in May. And when I put the call for testers, it may have even gone up by the time I publish this, um, you'll just be committing to finish one sock. I mean, presumably at some point you will want to finish two, but <laughs> I'm only going to ask you to do one in order to provide feedback for the pattern. Um, so that is in the works. Um, and then this one I'm really excited about, and I think I had shown you a little bit um, in the last episode. It would probably really help me out if I watched my previous episode so I could remember what I already told you. I keep forgetting. This is just a, um, a cowl project that jumped on the needles. Uh, I was playing with this idea of doing two color brioche, not with necessarily two colors, but with one color um, single stranded and a second color, um, I hate air quotes, <laughs> um, a second color that is the original strand plus a strand of uh, the lace weight fluffy you know, mohair or alpaca. Um, so I was playing with that, with the cow pattern, and it has already come off my needles. It was such a quick project and I'm really excited about it. Um, so this is the finished cowl. This is completely reversible. It uses two color brioche. So it starts from uh, a tubular cast on, which is not absolutely necessary, but I love it, I love the, the edge. Um, and then just a little bit of twisted rib, and then you do the two color brioche. So with this side facing out, this is the, um, the double stranded with the alpaca, um, sort of as the main color. And then it finishes up with um, just a couple of inches of ribbing that creates a collar that you could fold over. And that's really simple. And then on the other side, same deal, but you pick up an extra layer using that fuzzy alpaca or merino or uh, mohair silk and create a different collar at the top that you can uh, fold up or down. So this is the side with, you can see that the main color 
is the single strand and the, the alpaca is kind of in the background, just giving it um, a little extra fuzz. So you can wear it with this, you know, collar up, um, which in these times we're supposed to be covering our faces. I know a mask is ideal. Oh, masks aren't widely available. Um, and I don't know, it's gotta be better than nothing, especially since it's double layered. So you could fold that down, down, sorry, Baltimore O's. So you could fold it down. So you just have sort of this extra snuggly collar and it's the ribbing or you can have it up and have you know that pretty layer or you can wear it completely the other way. And you can see on this side, really, it's not two colors, but it really does look like it. So again, you can wear it up or you can fold the collar down and then you get this pretty layer of alpaca showing on the outside. So this, um, except for, you know, this bit at the bottom, this is completely double layered because brioche is like a, a double layer as well. And then you have this double layered uh, little collar at the top. I'm loving this project. This is going to be published later this month. This is called the uh, Love Lies Waiting Cowl. Um, I have a couple of testers going right now. This is such an easy project. Um, if you know how to do two color brioche, uh, but even if you don't, um, this is a good project to learn on because there's no shaping, increasing, decreasing or anything. You're just knitting straight. Um, and I do, I believe, have a tutorial on two color brioche uh, worked in the round here on my YouTube channel. So you can check that out as well. Uh, to create this, there's no seaming. So to create this second layer, I did the ribbing first, then I turned it uh, with this side and picked up stitches along that round. So um, if you're not familiar with picking up stitches sort of in the middle of the fabric, it's really easy. It's just like picking up <laughs> stitches along the edge, only instead of the edge, you're picking up stitches in the middle of, of each stitch. So you'll, when you kind of pull it apart, you'll see um, there's a little, got a little strand in the middle of a stitch and you just pick it up there. So it's very simple. Um, I finished it with the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. So it is nice and stretchy and can fold down. Um, that was a better down. And you, uh, on the round before the bind off, you knit the lace weight layer to get stitches together with the rib layer stitches. So that, again, there's no seaming, you're knitting them together so that they are joined. Um, I'm really happy with this project. It was so warm and cozy, and maybe it's not the best time of the year for that. But you know, sometimes things just <laughs> pop up in your brain, and I'm definitely not gonna wait until uh, winter for this one, because I, I just think this is a really cute project. So this uses um, uh, a DK weight yarn, and then a coordinating, or contrasting, however you like, uh, skein of um, either the, mohair silk or the Surrey Alpaca silk. Uh, I used Chelsea Lux Dream, but I checked out her website and it doesn't seem like she has it anymore. Um, so, but there are plenty of other yarn companies that do. Um, and I just showed you one before, the Yarn Love. So um, lots of places to get that. And it's about 225 yards of each. Uh, the DK weight, DK weight I used is uh, little skein in the big wool, her D, her merino DK, and that is uh, 230 yards, and I had some left over. So um, you could probably stash dive for at least the DK if you have not been uh, stocking up on the the lace weight like so many of us have. Um, but I'm just I'm really happy with this project, and I hope you guys are gonna like the pattern. You can look for it uh, in a couple of weeks toward the end of April. I will have that out. I just need to. Uh, let my testers do their thing and then take some photos. So that's what I've got this month for Adelante. All right, so I don't do me and my bright ideas too often, uh, fortunately, but I do have to do it in this episode. This is where I tell you about I have uh, screwed something up royally and I have definitely screwed something up royally this month. Um, I have been working on the sleeveless uh, top design with the Fiber for the People yarn. Um, Taylor dyed two custom colorways for me for this project. Uh, I've been so excited about it. 
and I had finished the sample up to the armholes and then I put it on the dress form and it was huge. Um, so this is a sleeveless top. Uh, so it should have some negative ease at the bust, um, just to make sure it's not kind of sticking out of the armholes and things. Um, you want it to be close fitting at the bust. Um, but then it has the pleat in the front, so it sort of moves out into an A-line shape. Um, and I had on my dress form at least four extra inches at the bust. It was supposed to be negative ease, and I had so much extra fabric. And then I tried it on myself, and the same thing. Um, so I went back to my swatch, um, which I believe is here. Here it is. And... Um, As you can perhaps see, if you're familiar with this technique, I did uh, swatching flat in the round, which means rather than cast on in the round, I worked the swatch um, flat, but carried the yarn behind so that I was knitting every row to mimic the stockinette in the round. Um, and this method has not failed me in the past, but apparently it has this time. So my gauge here was about five and a half stitches to the inch. And my gauge on the sample was five stitches to the inch, and that's unblocked. Um, this is blocked. So usually when you block, um, your gauge is gonna, may not loosen up at all, might loosen up a little bit. Really, really unlikely to tighten up unless you are pulling downward dramatically. Um, so my gauge, failed me. And this is my fault because I didn't do what I always tell my students to do, which is to continue to check your gauge while your project is on the needles. Um, it's not going to match your swatch gauge exactly because your swatch is blocked and your project is not. But if there's a dramatic difference, um, you'll know that something is off. And I didn't do that. And I certainly should have. So... <sighs> pulled the whole thing out. I had to start totally over. Um, and again, as I was talking about earlier, I find the, the mohair yarn very sticky, um, obviously. And <clears throat> this, um, the fingering weight yarn I'm, I'm using for this project is also, um, has a little bit of mohair in it, so it is also sticky. And I was really worried about pulling it out that I was going to get tangled into a mess and I was going to lose the yarn. So I, I wound it directly from the sample uh, onto the ball winder and that worked really well. I didn't lose any yarn. Um, it's all in this nice cake and now it's all, you know, just together. So I don't have to <laughs> keep wrangling two balls of yarn. It's all together in here, but I had to start that project completely I was originally hoping to publish at the end of April. That is um, definitely not going to happen. Um, I think I can get back on track somewhat quickly because um, it is mostly stockinette. What's really standing out for the project is the yarn and the pleat in the front. Um, but it's still, you know, a fair bit of work to get done before I am even back to where I was before. I was about two thirds done. And now I have to start completely over. So, uh, yeah. Me and my bright ideas. Keep checking your gauge on the needles. I'm not saying you have to be obsessive about it, but as you're working, you know, every few days, weeks, check. Make sure that you're, you know, in the ballpark. Um, and remembering that blocking is probably going to loosen your gauge, not tighten it. So, there you have it, a giant screw up for this episode. Thank you all so much for joining me for episode 18 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Uh, links to everything that I've talked about in this episode can be found in the show notes at mediaperuana.com slash ELO and Stitch. You can also find links to my social media, my pattern shop, and those basic things uh, right down below. Uh, a special thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping me keep this podcast up and running. 
Uh, if you are interested in supporting Maybe a Better One of Designs and the ELO and Stitch podcast and finding out about all of the freebies and perks and outtakes and bonuses that you get uh, as a uh, patron, you can find more information at patreon.com slash maybe a better one up. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, I hope that you will like, comment, subscribe, share, all those things that help me expand the podcast's reach. Uh, you can find past episodes of the podcast as well as my vlog series, Knitting Design Studio, and lots of knitting tutorials right here on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Maybe a Better Wanna, and I will see you next time. Fireworks are on your head! Fireworks! <laughs> 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 <laughs>